glass, the white underneath, and the glass. The reason why I like white because I use a lot of transparent color. And the one I do the transparent application, so I can see better about transparency with glass palette rather than this one. So, but this one is beneficial as you see lots of artists do this because you can see actual contrast between the skin color to to the background or something. Okay. So. Is that just for your gray color? Yeah, just a neutral gray. So. Acrylic or oil, or does it matter? Uh, doesn't matter. I, I did the acrylic because it soaked out quickly. Okay. And then uh, and then apply oil after drying. So. Okay. And then this here, the dark area, I always uh, uh, red versus green, and then blue versus orange, uh, always complementary color mixing for a different kind of brown, green brown, reddish brown, something like that. Okay. So. so blue and umber you use? Uh, blue yes. and burnt sienna right here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Viridian Green versus uh, Alicent Crimson. So. Rather than neutral brown.
So in, in this state, uh, we're looking for it's more uh, geometrical structure like this and this. It's more geometrical. So that's why, rather than uh, just a small thing, that's really help, help you to construct it from basic uh, general to more specific later. Some artists prefer to uh, start with more, more accurate drawing. Uh, for myself, I don't want to be too accurate in this stage. If you're too, too accurate, that kill the possibility for me. I write rather like more sketchy, so and then continue to from uh, more uh, in general and then gradually move on to more specific uh, rather than too specific and then you kill a lot of possibilities in the process and uh, so you just try to finish if uh, you draw too specific you're just feeling in feeling out rather than still looking for uh, constant searching the you know, relationship so a different artist has different strategy too And then that's why to keep everything loose, open up, so uh, I have more interesting uh, lots of fun, and then sfumato. Sfumato is an Italian word that's like, like smoky. So, uh, so this is uh, the sketch when I'm going to start with color from, from there. If you have any questions, just let me know in the process. Don't be afraid. So as long as I start with working with color, so I'm going to use a new one yeah, okay. So the, the game is uh, only for sketch, so uh, for the drawing process. Uh, this game saw is not painting medium. As painting medium, uh, that's a painting medium, like linseed oil, walnut oil, and then new one yeah, that's, that's painting medium. It's changing the character, but also has binding power. But game does not have it, so as you know, okay, so. 
And then as long as I'm using fake application, I cannot use Gamsol because it's dangerous. The Gamsol really diluted the paints without the binding power. So, and uh, uh, for the thing, for the for the lights, I'm going to use less medium, and then for the transparent shadow, I use more medium to make more transparent. So, uh, if you use 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 too much medium on the lights, and then you're no longer to build up thickness. So for my, my technique, so I like to thickness, so I have to reduce the paints, uh, reduce the painting medium on the lights, but use more painting medium on the shadow or on the background. So, okay. And then uh, the key color for skin color is burn sienna. Okay, you can see everything consists more burn sienna. And then uh, the three major sessions are forehead, and the cheekbone sessions, and then the mouth sessions. That's three sessions has the key color, a little different, rather than the same color. But that, it does, some artists just use one color, block in everything, and then try to make a little separation. While I block in, I try to think about the three colors, uh, three sections for the color differences. Uh, for example, uh, like the forehead is more peach, or orangey, if, if you will. And then this cheekbone section, no section, is more pinkish. And then it's more blue and green on this mouth, especially for men. But women does that, so that too. It's more cool color on this section, pinkish, and then uh, oranges <coughs> on this three. And, and the ear is very reddish, so those major sections. And then the shadow, the shadow color, as a key color, is burn, burn amber. Okay, as long as you add white to the burn amber, this color is very close to the, the shadow. So uh, the key color for, for the, uh, the, sh the shadow is burn amber, and then you can mix in. So for, for example, those three colors is more cool. Uh, you can use those three colors for shadow or and uh, unless you want to do reflection, warm reflection, so you need uh, uh, either burnt sienna or canary red light. So this is for shadow, this is for light, and then key uh, color for the lights is burnt sienna. And then adding more pinkish for nose and cheek, and uh, some you need a little yellowish peach, and then the yellow curve too. Okay, so. and, uh, and then I'm going to separate, uh, separate those two brushes from each other. So can you say again, the forehead is peachy? Yeah, forehead is peachy. And the cheek is? Cheek is more reddish. And then more greenish, uh, bluish on, on, on the cheek. On mouth, around mouth, so. and uh, I I always try to separate uh, the, the the color, uh, not the brushes. Why I try to apply more transparent color? For example, if I do more transparent color on shadow, so that's more aggressive. So like like this, okay. So I always use different brush and. Uh, So you can see this more trans more transparent location. So and then I use other brush for the lights. So, so you can see the differences between light and shadow. Okay, shadow is more transparent. And then lights a very heavy application. And then you see the light pop right there. So and then
So this is to give you the separation. You can see this this more peach, more deep, and then this more reddish for the two sections there. So, and then uh, it's more greenish down down here. So that's major blocking. Okay. And then when you block in, uh, that's just in general. So you don't need to be afraid to bring up forms and then you can rebuild later. Okay. So you're looking for the major, the drama, uh, if you the slide dark, just like drawing process. Okay, so
I realized the snow is six minutes too short, so I'm going to
later stage. So in the early stage, you'll need to form a major, major complex, the major uh, uh, in general like vision, so uh, chisel plane. Okay, so that's the first stage. And then you try to capture your first impression about those drama. And, uh, and the second stage, the middle stage, you try to remember uh, you know, where you need more details, where you need less details, but you need to provide more references and then render well. And then later stage, you try to, uh, because the more the, the time is spending and then become a little high, you start losing the first impression. And then in the end, you try to bring back this first impression by Sacrifice some details and then uh, working on the whole bit more rather than just keep running. Uh, in, in the running state, in the middle stage, you uh, you focus on the middle tone area. The early stage, you just focus on the light dark. That's more, more extreme. And the middle stage, you're, you're looking for more turning, more turning the medium, uh, mid, uh, middle tone area. So that's really important because if you lack in the medium top area and then the form becomes relatively flatter and more graphic uh, or cube, uh, cube, cubism, uh, it's more decent render on the middle area and create more painterly solid form. So, so those medium, to, uh, medium area you need to focus on the medium tone more. And then in the end, so you need to just sacrifice the maybe over over rendered little cheat high and uh, create create more dynamic movement, but also make it real. It looks better. So those three stages for some different issues. In general speaking, it's not everyone doing that. So and then for for example, right now it's really interesting contract on 4X, but still lacking a nice turn <coughs> later, so I have to do more turning rendering. See, there's a other technique that I use that's called Fumado, that's Italian word, which means smoking. So to be able to, like uh, you all hear the Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, the Da Vinci used Fumado technique, it's more smoke compared to early 15th century uh, Flemish school painting. And Titian actually is the first artist to use more extreme uh, Fumado, which means more smoke. And uh, so that's what I like to do. So to be able to create more smoky Fumado, uh, effects, you have to keep the contour more foggy, more smoky. So that's what I always use the uh, loss and fun. You know, you see it's a loss, and then you see it's a complete loss, open and clear. Loss and fun, loss and fun. So that's to be able to achieve that. So you have to uh, constantly break up contours and then reveal. Break up contour reviews. So that's what I like to do to make it more exciting. Uh, it's more painterly. So. Diane, that's what I was talking about a couple of weeks ago with the implied edges. Okay, that's a you're dancing between the foreground and the background. Over that, over that, over that, one over the, and pretty soon you've got an edge without saying this is the edge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's where to make the, it's more spontaneity. And then also the, the object relates to that, not cut and paste.
So this section, this section is in color, the sections, right? So orange, orange, pinkish, and then bluish green on this section. So that's those three sections that has a key color to separate those three uh, main. So your darks are not very really dark. Right. So has to be relatively. You see, if you squint your eyes, see how light versus dark is already dark enough, right? Yeah. I feel really looking for this. Unlike photorealism, photorealism without the relationship is looking for one specific color that is really dark sometimes. It's just so dark, and then it gives more light. But for this, looking for relationship, uh, sometimes we don't need to go too dark, as long as the contrast in the visual is right. So you, did, you don't need to look for just physical, physical color, looking for relationship. So, so you can see this is a shallow color. Shallow color, the key color is burn, burn amber. Right, so you can see there's a whole amber and a little orangey uh, cadmium, uh, not cadmium, cadmium, mm -hmm. uh, burnt sienna. Yeah. And then that's just, just the color looks more, more beautiful shadow line, just just burnt, burnt and burnt and white. And then this little touch, maybe a little bluish in it or greenish in it, so like there. But the key is just burnt and burnt too. But burnt and you have to add white. If you use burn amber just direct by itself, just like this, similar as this color, really muddy brown. So. Do you think, do you, do you stick to those colors you told us on the list, or do you go into a different range? Uh, mostly just, just color pattern. Maybe I, uh, I have a cobalt purple, cobalt purple, um, because this, really purple, purple, uh, that's what I like. For myself, I decided that color. And the cross and blue too, cross and blue version. Yeah, not pretty blue, but yeah. very heavy, uh, more expressive blue, just like a German expressionist from my friend, use cross and blue rather than color blue or uh, mushroom blue, like impressions. A very pretty blue. Sometimes I would need more punch. It's cobalt blue and then cobalt purple that I had to indicate. This is fresh and blue, but uh, staves off radiation sickness too? Uh, fresh and blue is more transparent blue, uh, but uh, when I use fresh and blue, I either mix it uh, with transparent color or I just add a white to have the Press blue to the greenish blue. Okay. Uh, not as thick blue as burnt blue, blue. Yeah. Little muddy blue, which is too abused by impressions. So if you use this blue, and then you can see how it's more from impressions. The Prussian blue follows more German expressions. So very heavy, little dark, menacing.